Hello everyone, this is Dev Magazine channel, we are talking about development. In this video we are gonna talk about the structure or architecture of React applications. We'll look at different approaches to structuring files to make the project maintainable and scalable. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video, stay tuned. Well, app structure is a wide topic, there is no universal agreement on what structure is good or bad, it really depends on the size of the project you work with, on need for lazy loading or code splitting, on the preferences of developers or a team. Please tell me your opinion on different approaches of app structures, what's your favorite one, what tricks or patterns do you use during development, just interesting to know different points of view. Ok, let's start. Popular advice about React app structure from Dan Abramov says that uh, move files around until it feels right. I think that this is ok, as there are a lot of projects and all of them are different obviously. Official documentations offer two main approaches, so grouping by features or routes or grouping by file type. Grouping by feature or routes, for example we have application pages and all components and subcomponents that build this page are stored together. Maybe with their own structure, but anyway, they are stored together. Grouping by file type, their similar files are kept together. Like functions working with API are stored in one folder, but components are in another separate one. I think this is an example of flat architecture. I think that the truth is in the middle, to roughly follow one of these approaches is possible, but as the app grows it will not be comfortable to use it. You will need to find a balance and eventually update something. For smaller projects I guess any of these ways are good. I don't think that it is necessary to think a lot about structure at the very beginning. You can just start with any structure and then make necessary tweaks. I think it will be obvious what to update. At the very beginning it is good to focus on features, especially if it is POC. Universal advice here, try to avoid deep folder nesting, 3 or 4 levels are enough. Let's look at options of these approaches. So there are lots of options that combine both of these base approaches. You can start with creating a separate folder for app pages and create subfolders inside of it for components that are used in this page. As soon as this subcomponent should be used in other pages, move them to shared folder. Shared folder is in the same level as page folders. Shared folder is a good place for presentational components. Pages should not have references to each other as they are in the same level. That's why shared folder is necessary. Keep structure maintainable and clean. One more way to group files by features is fractal architecture. This is an example of good architecture, it, it's scalable. For me it is a preferable way to organize a project. Another name of this approach is self-contained apps or recursive apps. It has a lot of advantages, like it, it is well suitable for code splitting, we will dive deeper about code splitting a bit later by the way. In fractal structure basically subfolders kind of repeat the structure of the parent folder and each feature encapsulated with all the necessary stores, helpers and so on. Of course it may have dependencies from shared things like smaller components and helpers and this is fine. One more way of structuring files is um, atomic design. It was described in the article written by Brett Frost in 2013. The terminology is based on chemistry as all matter is made of atoms, atoms for molecules, molecules in turn are building blocks of organisms. Interfaces are also combinations of smaller pieces and the idea is to break interfaces into fundamental building blocks. Atomic design is a methodology for creating design systems which says that there are five levels. They are atoms, molecules, organisms, templates and pages. Atoms are basic things, for example button, input fields, 
labels, and so on. Molecules are combinations of atoms. They are made of three or maybe more atoms. So in rare cases, of more atoms, yeah. For example, the search component may combine input field and button. Organisms are groups of molecules. They are more complex, for example, header of homepage, for example, or user form, which may have set of fields for name, surname, and other things, and button for submitting the form. Then templates. Templates consist of organisms, and the templates form layouts without actual data. Pages, in turn, are instances of templates. Pages have data that go to the templates, and pages are what the actual user sees. The terminology is specific, but I think that a lot of people use it implicitly, but with less amounts of levels. For example, a lot of projects have com components and pages folders, in rare cases, components are grouped by complexity, but anyway. Atomic design is well suitable for UI components. For example, UI components libraries. You can easily create a storybook for those components and manage their complexity by splitting them in that way. Now I'd like to emphasize other interesting things that are also parts of the project. The first one is index.js or index.ts files. They are useful for making encapsulated modules. It is like an interface in folder level. For example, a folder has a lot of components with its own structure and only one combined component should be exposed. For example, home page component. Home page component may be built of a lot of components. Other components in this folder are specific for this feature kind of private and they must not be used outside of it. It is good to isolate such things and keep complexity only there to make other features not to know what happens inside. It will also speed up the development process, avoiding collisions in distributed teams. The important thing is that in this case, index must not contain any logic, I mean business logic. It should work only as a contract exporting components or helpers or other kind of, kind of functions. Then a couple of words about shared components. In my opinion, you should work with shared components like they are something, something like a separate UI library. Why? You should keep it clean and uh, reusable. Components may grow and they can include corporate style or they may become like a design system, which can be distributed separately. These components can be moved to NPM package or to separate Git repository. That's, that's why these components should be presentational components. One more thing that I like in projects is to create layouts. It is components with the base structures, like frames of the page. For example, home page layout may have header and main, main content and uh, footer. And actual content goes from props, as render props, for example. You know, it, it is like a slot strategy, how it is called in Vue.js. Another thing connected with the tests, so where to put test files? Here are two options. The first one, keeping tests together with the source code in the same folder, and the second one, move all the tests to a completely different folder under src slash tests, for example. Both options have their own pros and cons. Keeping tests alongside with source code, so it is handy to keep tests up to date when source code is changing, as developers see those tests and update them as soon as code is changing. Disadvantage structure may seem bloated. The second approach uh, about separating tests in their own folder. So the advantage is there is no extra files, just source code. The disadvantage, it is hard to synchronize structure of source code and structure of the test folder. You may want to add extra level in your components folder or move some files 
and uh, you may want to update tests as well to have same structure there in tests like mirroring structure in sources uh, and tests personally i prefer to keep tests in the same folder with the corresponding source code this way isolates features well and uh, if you think that tests complicate navigation you can just hide those dot test dot js files by this path template in ide settings as we mentioned ab above files may and will be moved eventually to avoid pain connected with the updating paths in dependent files there is an option to use absolute path or aliases instead of relative paths it is possible to update webpack config after ejecting it but sometimes ejecting is not applicable but uh, there is a way to use a library called react app rewired or similar one it is used for tweaking the webpack config generated by the create react app without using eject um, i didn't use it personally just know that such thing exists the next thing in the application is store and question is what to do with with uh, this store usually it is uh, stored separately in for example src slash store or it can be split to feature based modules and these separate modules go to relevant feature folders with redux you can use reducers composition you can create a set of reducers for each feature and these reducers are just parts of the global states if you have code splitting in, in your app there is replace reducer function it works like um, when a new javascript bundle with a new feature is loaded and it has its own store and reducer then root reducer gonna be recreated with um, extra reducer from that new bundle actually what is code splitting and what it used for sometimes you may want to implement on-demand loading of features for example if your app has uis for both user and admin there is no sense to load all the source code admin should not have user components and pages loaded because just why and uh, vice versa you can set up routing that way so separate javascript bundles will be loaded depending on the user type on login bundle size affects on loading time and just don't make the user wait a long time splitting code by routes is a popular solution as routes determine new features like settings user profile page and so on in general in order to create good architecture you just have to keep in mind base principles the first one is separation of concerns the other one is uh, dry don't repeat yourself so it means that you have to make components and helpers reusable keep shared codes separately if it is a part of business logic that should be used in several places just make a separate function for it and uh, call it where needed for example price formatting rules and so on another principle is uh, kiss keep it simple use patterns where it can be useful keep code clean and maintainable avoid complex constructions split bigger functions or components into smaller ones and uh, you'll have good maintainable and scalable applications well Today we talk a lot on how to make the code clean and how to make the best structure for the React application. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, hope it was helpful. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Follow us on Twitter as well. Thank you, see you soon.